Hey friends, I'm Stacy. And I'm Kevin. And we are in currently working on a new project, which is a cargo trailer camper conversion. And we are doing all kinds of things from the, from gutting the whole thing and building the whole entire thing. And we've got plenty of videos that show all the steps along the way. So today's project is to insulate and finish the walls. So the first thing we had to do is to decide what to use on the walls to make it look finished and look like a camper. And there were several op options actually that we had to think about and choose and figure out what would be the best for this build. How about we put paint on the walls? I love white paint. I think white just opens up the whole space. So here's the problem. White paint on top of plywood is gonna leave it a little bit with an unfinished look and I'm not sure Taylor's gonna like that. We had friends that did some beadboard type paneling and it looked really good, but it started to swell anytime there was moisture. So that probably won't be our best bet. What about some kind of wood on the walls? So putting wood on the walls would look really good. However, remember we have the issue of what the whole point of doing the cargo camper is to keep it light so we can pull it with the Jeep. So wood is gonna be a bit too heavy for the end product. Could we cover it with something, something lightweight that still looks good? So when we were at Home Depot, we found in what in the paneling aisle, some covering that goes on top of, that you glue on top of plywood, and it's, it's, it seems pretty light. It is pretty light. It's also washable. We could get that. So we bought that stuff, and we hauled it all back, and we realized it was a lot heavier than we thought, and it was pretty expensive, so it kind of pushed us over budget. Let me tell you what happened. So then I had to bring it back to Home Depot. I get in there, I go to take it back, I give her the card, because Home Depot, we didn't have all the receipts, we'd just been using the cards. She says it's not on any of the cards. Then, I have to call Eric and they have to bring a new card back. I was about to cry because she looked at me and I was, had tears in my eyes because I said, I cannot haul this back by myself. It had already fallen on the floor multiple times. I was dragging it at the customer service center. It was terrible. People were coming to help. It was awful. Do not buy it. So what about wallpaper? As long as it, it's white and it's lightweight and I don't want to take it back to Home Depot again, I'm good with that. So we're gonna go with wallpaper. So for a complete list of tools that we used in this particular project, you can visit our website at www.befreebenson.com. And just in case you forget that website, it will be in the description, linked in the description below. Let's get at it. So what we're doing is we're going to remove each piece of plywood from the wall in here. As we do that, we're going to mark what piece it is using Eric's code. So we have all the walls out and we decided that we are going to cover them with wallpaper. The first step is to paint them with a primer that is good for adhesive. So, so the primer that we're gonna be using is a seal grip primer. And while we have the walls out, we're gonna prime all of the walls and get them ready to put the wallpaper on and that it will actually stay on because we don't want it to peel or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and get that primer on those walls. So you definitely want to make sure that you use the primer first. That allows the wallpaper and the paste to stick onto it. If you didn't use primer, then it probably just peel right off because the surface is so porous and, and uneven. So right here, you see the back door. We were going to take the back doors. We started taking them off and we were going to paint them and insulate them, but they're glued together. So rather so that we just don't mess with the integrity of the doors, we decided to just go ahead and leave them, take off some of the hardware wear so we can go ahead and paint and then we'll put our wallpaper over top of those and we're not going to insulate those particular doors right there. So to insulate the walls we had to first determine what kind of insulation we were going to use. 
So what we've got right here is the one inch foamular board insulation. So we're going to measure inside the cargo camper at each spot. You can see behind me where the studs are and we're gonna measure that and we're gonna go ahead and cut the insulation to fit right inside each one of these spots. Yeah. Okay, so it really helps out if you have sharp blades in your razor knife as you're cutting the insulation. And uh, after a little bit of time, they do wear down, so you gotta, gotta flop them around and get the sharp edge going. Quick pro tip on getting rid of your razor blades, take a piece of tape and put it over them. It keeps them from cutting people in the garbage later on. Pressure's on, see if I can cut straight. We've made the cut, so now we're just gonna break the board down. Just looks like this. here basically down to the corner so I'll just draw that line out there and cut that triangle off I'm still working on that it's all very precise very very precise yes. so this is one of the trailer lights here these are the wires coming down into it so in order to get the insulation to lay flat in this opening, I'm gonna see if I can kind of score out a little bit of a hole and a little bit of a line down the side to account for those wires. All right, I got a little bit of a trough cut out here. I'm gonna see if I can fit it into place now. We're getting closer. The ceiling is done. We're getting closer to getting the walls done and get all of the insulation in. So it'll be nice and warm. No lunch until the insulation is in the walls. This holds those in place. So as I put the piece of insulation in, it, they don't get all caught in behind it. Mm -hmm. Kind of keeps them organized and out of the way as I put the insulation in. Using the styrofoam board insulation in the campers is better than using any kind of um, uh, normal type of insulation just because it does not hold in the moisture the same way and it's just easy, it's a lot easier to work with in, these, in this kind of a situation. Okay, we're ready for the next step. Once you have the insulation in and you've put it into all of the different areas like you can see behind me, the next step is to take your foil tape and we're gonna tape all the sides of the insulation, covering up any cracks, any little crevices. So when they take their escape pod to Antarctica, they're covered. So we have the last bit of the insulation going in right now. Whew, it's a bit much, a bit more than what we uh, thought it was gonna be, but it's going good. 
So now we are going to take a break and have some lunch. When we come back, we will finish taping it up and start putting in some plywood. All right, so one of the things we wanted to do was have this ready for solar. We're gonna have a panel up top that will keep all of the wires accessible at all times, but then due to budget constraints and other things right now, we're not ready to put solar in just yet. So what we wanna do is we wanna leave a nice little path right down this wall that will come out. This will be enclosed by a bench. So that eventually we can pop that trim off, bring our wires through, and then be able to run them down in here. The reason we're putting a bench here as well is to eventually hide the batteries, the inverter, some of the other pieces that will be necessary for solar. So today, we've already got everything insulated and for some reason we forgot to cut the trough uh, to begin with. So we're gonna actually cut out about a three, three and a half inch swath coming down this piece of styrofoam. That's from the end of the sky. You plan on coming out at the floor, basically? Or? Yes. Uh, yeah, we want to come down. All right, so we cut out a channel here so we can fish the wires down later when we implement uh, solar at some point in the future. So now I'm just going to line this hole with the uh, foil tape, and that'll help with the insulation. That'll also make sure the channel is nice and smooth for when we do go to put the wires in. So we're ready to start putting on the wall covering and so we purchased a paintable solutions wall covering for problem surfaces which will just it's just a little thicker than regular wallpaper and will allow us to cover up all of that uh, plywood and then we also purchased a heavy duty clear wallpaper adhesive so that it will really get a good a good it will adhere really well and we won't have to worry about it peeling we have a wall wall covering tools kit and of course everything will be on our website at www.befreebenson.com we've got of course our scissors and we are ready to roll and start covering some walls before beginning the wallpaper, we're going to go ahead and prep the surface. And the way that we're going to prep that surface is just running a sandpaper, running some sandpaper lightly over any of the really rough, rough edges. That wallpaper that we have is designed to cover rough walls and imperfections. However, just any big chunks or any, there are a few holes that are a little bit deeper. We're going to fill those in with the caulk and then we'll be ready to go ahead and start the wallpaper. Okay, so this is our process for for doing the, the wallpaper. So we're ready to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from the top of the wall to the bottom of the wall. And then we're gonna add an inch and a half on the bottom, inch and a half on the top so that we have some, some extra that we're gonna cut from once we hang the wallpaper. Then we're going to, once we cut it, we're gonna lay it up there and we're gonna measure out so we can cut out any electrical boxes or anything like that that we have in the way. Then we're going to take that piece and we're going to actually spray the back of it with a, we have a water bottle with, with some water in it because it's pre-pasted. Now we have paste because we want the heavy duty paste because we know that in the trailer, sometimes it can be moist. We don't want any issues with the wallpaper coming off. So we're using Using the heavy duty paste, but since it's pre pasted as well, that just gives us more insurance that it's not going to peel off. So we're going to spray the back of it, and then we are going to take a roller and we are going to roll the paste, the heavy duty adhesive paste, onto the wall area where we're about to put that piece up. Then we will lay that piece up and we will cut off any excess from the top and from the bottom. So let's get at it.
finished with the walls. We're finished with the walls. So we are officially finished with the walls in the cargo camper. Woohoo! So the walls look great. The wallpaper's on. Now it's just going to dry and be beautiful. And the walls were much harder than I thought they were yes, going to be. Were. It took a lot longer than we thought and a bit more challenging than we anticipated. <laughs> so super excited that the walls are done. And if you want to see more videos like this, click on the video on the screen or go to our channel and click on one of our playlists. If you found value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel. And as always, doing things yourself saves you money and allows you to be free. See you in the next video. If you've done something cool on your walls in your camper, if you've done something, I'm not sort of in your camper. <laughs> if you've done something, these guys are not going to be much help. And he is going to enjoy the shade because he's fluffy. It's really important when you're doing all this work to make sure you have a lot of water. I refer to this as my jug of failure. <laughs> At least I think that's what we're doing for sure that we are good and insulated for when they take their their and if you found this video to be helpful in any way go ahead and <laughs> we don't say that we what do we say